people cycle. Thank you, Shebby. Um, I will be presenting the data on behalf of my colleagues. I'm happy to be here with you and to present the uh, survival data on Mona Lisa 3. Uh, Mona Lisa 3 was a trial that looked at a different CDK4-6 inhibitor, in this case ribocyclob, uh, in combination with fulvestrin versus uh, fulvestrin and placebo. Here are my disclosures. So uh, you all know breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related death in women. Uh, ribocyclob is a CDK4-6 inhibitor. It was approved for hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer. Uh, the phase uh, three Mona Lisa seven trial, which was conducted in premenopausal patients, uh, was presented at ASCO and showed a survival advantage there uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.71. And the phase three Mona Lisa three trial is what won the approval uh, based on progression-free survival data for hormone receptor positive HER2 uh, uh, negative disease. And now we're looking to see what, uh, what the, survival, the survival data will look like. This is the design. Again, patients were randomized uh, two to one to receive ribocycle plus fulvestrin versus placebo plus fulvestrin. Uh, what was somewhat unique in this study is there was a large percent, essentially half of the patients who were getting their therapy in the front line, first line. In other words, they had not received any therapy for metastatic breast cancer. Uh, and they were being uh, compared to those who were going to get fulvestrin in that same setting. Uh, so the combination was being compared there. So as the bottom, you can see the two groups, uh, those are getting in the front line and those are getting it uh, in the second line. <clears throat> Here are the survival data. And I think uh, uh, it is apparent from what we're looking at now that we again see, as uh, George has talked about, a significant uh, improvement in overall survival. The numbers are shown here. There are two landmark analyses at uh, 36 months and at 42 months. Uh, what is interesting about the Mona Lisa data is we have not yet reached the median in the experimental arm. So they are continuing on, and we don't know how far off that curve will go to tell you what the difference is going to be, but, uh, and that's certainly good for the patients. Uh, but we have reached the median in the control arm, uh, as you can see here. The landmark analysis tell you the differences uh, at the 36-month 30, uh, 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 time point and a 42-month time point, and they're shown here. There was a pre-specified uh, boundary that if it crossed, the, uh, it would meet the survival analysis data. This is the second uh, pre-specified protocol-defined survival analysis, and at the second one, the first one had not yet received uh, had not yet achieved significance at the second one. It clearly is. There will be a third one, and we'll see how far out that curve goes in terms of what's not been reached for the experimental arm so far. <clears throat> if you look by line of therapy, um, again, you see a significant difference. In the first line, uh, we uh, see the uh, combination has not yet reached, again, the median, uh, whereas in the early relapse or second line, you can see the difference between the two arms, the experimental arm uh, versus the, uh, the control arm. And again, both are significant with hazard ratios of 0.7. It's been remarkable to see the consistency across this. Uh, there has been an update that will be presented at the, uh, at the presentation itself on the progression-free survival. And a progression-free survival, again, is consistent with what was reported previously. We're now out to 33 months. <coughs> of progression-free survival uh, in the combination arm for Mona Lisa 3. So here are the forest plots. Essentially, all subgroups uh, benefited. Those for which the median is crossing one, uh, making you question whether or not there's benefit, benefit, you can look at each of those groups, and they're extremely small numbers, uh, 4, 7, 13. So uh, the confidence intervals are very well for, are wide for those small numbers of patients, but for those where there are substantial numbers of patients in the group, you can see that across all subgroups there is benefit. The safety summary, uh, after about 40 months of follow-up, there are no new safety signals. Uh, for this analysis, uh, the key grade three, four uh, adverse events are shown as follows. Neutropenia, of course, is the major adverse event, 57% uh, versus 0.8%. <clears throat> this is mitigated with the one week off when the patients uh, 
take a week off therapy and the counts are allowed to recover. Hepatobiliary toxicity is shown here, the difference of uh, about uh, 7 to 8%. And pulmonary disorders, which has become an important question based on what the regulatory agencies are uh, asking us to look carefully at and caution about. Uh, in Mona Lisa 3, there were no grade 3, 4 pneumonitis or uh, interstitial lung disease uh, that were observed in, in either arm. Uh, in terms of QTC prolongation, uh, you can see the differences here, 1.2 percent in the control arm versus 3.1 percent in the experimental arm, and there are no, uh, no incidents of trisodes or uh, significant uh, life-threatening dysrhythmias. In conclusion, uh, ribocyclic cholesterol restaurant demonstrated a significant uh, overall survival advantage. Patients who received it both in the first line and second line setting demonstrated a significant survival advantage, uh, and as you can see also in the overall population. The safety profile remains consistent with the longer exposure. There's no new signals. And the combined data set between Mona Lisa 7 and Mona Lisa 3 represents some 1,400 patients who have been treated with the CDK4-6 inhibitor ribocyclob uh, in combination with hormonal therapy. Uh, and it uh, shows that, again, there is a significant but also clinically meaningful benefit in terms of prolongation of progression-free survival and now overall survival, regardless of whether the patient is premenopausal or postmenopausal, regardless of the patient received their drug uh, in the frontline setting or subsequently. I will now turn it over to Dr. Harbeck. 